Hi everyone, thanks for tuning in to another Broken Meeple video on this kind of rapid fire style review. I've yet to come up with a name for the series, but I'll work on that later. I'm taking suggestions, shall we say. And basically, I want to talk about a lot of games, but it takes a long time to record and edit one of those detailed reviews. And I'd like to save those for the more like hyped up games, the bigger titles, that sort of thing. But there's a lot of games I want to cover, and some of them just maybe don't warrant the full detail review. Like, I can talk about it in a relatively quick piece of time. So this, I'm experimenting with something similar to what my Beyond the Base game series looks like, where here's the game, I give a kind of 10 minute max summary of the game, of, of what I feel about it, give it a rating, and just kind of go through it without too many flashy effects. Although if I can throw in a movie clip here or there, I will. Get on with it. So this is Masters of Renaissance, Lorenzo in Magnifico, the card game. Yeah, try saying that in a mouthful. God, yeah, this is kind of ridiculous. This is essentially the small scale version of Lorenzo di Magnifico by Simon Luciani. And it's kind of like, well, put it this way. I have a bit of a checkered history with that game. I hate Lorenzo di Magnifico. I hate this. It is revolting. Boring, restrictive, punishing, don't like it. So when I got this, I thought, oh no, <laughs> I'm basically going to get the same problem. But then I thought, well, it's condensed. It might not be as punishing. It might not be as long. It might not be as restrictive. So we'll give it a go. Now, first off, get the whole the card game Lorenzo de Magnifico out of your head. It really is not that. The only relation this has to the big game is that it's got the same graphic design everywhere uh, on, on the cards artwork and that, and it utilizes the same resources, and there's a church track. Aside from that, it's fundamentally different from how that one plays. Oh yeah, and, and you can activate production. You know, otherwise I think they've literally put the card game Lorenzo de Magnifico to capitalize on the previous game's success. Because I think if you called this game by any other title, well, Masters of Renaissance, I mean, you want more generic title than that. But what exactly is this then? Well, this is a filler engine builder. And I do mean filler. I mean, 45 minutes, you are done with this game. It's pretty short. And if you know what you're doing, and there's only two of you, I dare say you could probably get it done in about 30, 35 minutes, like splendor levels of length. But it is a straight up engine builder. Everything about this is engine building. You are gaining resources, by the way, of this cool, I must admit, very cool marble system. Kind of a bit like the, like, you know, marbles you see in Potion Explosion. But what you essentially do is that each one of these colors denotes a resource, except for the uh, whites, I think, which are duds to begin with. But what you do is that you push the marbles along, and then you get the resources that are on the marbles that you pushed off, that one goes to the side, and then the next player decides, oh, I fancy this particular column, and this particular column, you know, and one falls off. It's a lot easier when you're not doing it in your hand. But essentially, that's your turn sequence. You choose a marble, and you push it off and see what happens. And you gain the resources, and it's, there's restrictions on how many you can store. But what you do with those resources is then you acquire these cards. They come in the four colors, much like the original game. So green, blue, yellow, and purple. But literally, the only difference between them is kind of what resource they focus on, really. In the previous game, there was a fundamental difference with what the green and the yellow and the purple and the blues did. Here, it's literally a case that the green might focus more on the stone resource, the blue might focus more on whatever the blue shield resource is, you know, and yellow will focus more on gold. I mean, that's literally it. Apart from that, these are just basically a deck of generic cards, and that word at the end, we're going to be focusing on that quite a bit here. But the whole game just revolves around that. You grab these cards with the resources you've been acquiring through this marble set. You then activate production every now and again, of which you've got three slots on your board to activate them. And they do things like one stone makes you three gold and one blue. I forget even what the names are. I mean, the book doesn't tell you, so what does it matter? Uh, I don't know. Uh, stone, servants, and shields. All right, so it's a shield. Whatever. Did Lorenzo have any theme? No, nor does this one. But here you go. One gold makes a shield. Uh, two servants makes two shields and two faith. What's faith? Well, the top of your board has a faith track because of course there's a faith track. There's always a church track. But here it's literally just a way of gaining more points except there's a little race aspect where uh, if you get to a certain spot, then you assess where you are in relation to the other players, and if they're not, if they're too far behind you, they lose out on some potential points. But other than that, the faith track is literally just another track you level up with an end game trigger at the end. And 
Other than that, you've just got some leader cards that you can start the game with. You can chuck them in for a faith point, which is kind of moronic, really. Or you can play it for its leader ability if you've got the prerequisites. But despite the fact that there's a decent amount of leaders here, there's only about four abilities. It's just a case of this one gives you a discount on shield. This one stone. This one gold. This one servant. This one turns white into servants. This one turns it into shields. This one turns it into this. It's like, come on, a little bit more variety would have been nice on that front. But you've got the extra aspect. So in terms of its gameplay, it's pretty easy to pick up. I mean, the rule book's only about four pages long. It's probably got more text than it needs, but honestly, I had no trouble learning this, whether it was from here or from the tabletop simulator mod, which is not official, so bear that in mind. But it's really straightforward. I mean, you'll be up and playing this game in no time at all, whether or not you have played the original or not. So I certainly did like the fact that this was a really easy game to pick up. And as I said, pretty short as well. Within 45 minutes offline, you should be doing this game. You should be wrapping it up in full. But there's where the problems kind of, well, sorry, the good side stops and the problems start arising. But these aren't major problems. It's just the, the remember that word I said, generic? That's essentially what this game feels like. Ultimately generic. It is as bare bones an engine builder as you can get. You grab these cards and they're worth points and there's multiple levels of them, level one, two, and three, but all it is is just slight upgrades of what they do. They don't do anything funky or cool or give you end game scoring bonuses other than what's printed at the bottom. It's just what resource would you like to turn into this resource? And in terms of ending the game, you either get so many cards or you get to the end of the faith track. The faith track tends to be the thing that triggers it the vast majority of the time, but it's really easy to spam faith from these cards. I mean, I win most of my games on faith, and here I go, I can get a level two card and a level three card. That could be my only two cards on my board. And if I just have three servants available, which is not difficult to get hold of, then I can get five faith every production phase. Five faith. There's only 24 spaces on the entire track. It's not difficult to spam faith like crazy in this game, and I just find that seems to be the most effective way to actually win. But other than the fact that this has a cool marble mechanic, which I do think is really, you know, really nice and nifty, that's all the game is. There's not really, there's no theme here. The aesthetics are, you know, just the same as they were with Lorenzo, which wasn't particularly interesting in my opinion. And longevity wise, there's nothing really here from replay value. There's no major variation with the leaders. The cards are all pretty much generic. You know, you're not going to notice one game suddenly better than the other just because some different cards come out. The faith track doesn't change. There's no B side of the board. It's blank on the other side. And even the solo mode is literally just see what score you can get. You have one piece and there's a black cross in there somewhere that you level up the faith track and the cards sort of filter away. But other than that, it's exactly the same. So it it didn't I didn't dislike the game though that's the thing this is a decent engine builder if you like engine builders and you want something like filler length you know 45 minute tops length but that's all the game is it doesn't offer anything new it doesn't offer anything particularly like unique and as I say you are literally deciding whether you're going to spam faith or go for cards that's it there's no like overarching strategy in this game that you pick from it's just do I want to do this or that and you need cards anyway in order to do faith, so every game plays out the same. Really, your main source of enjoyment from this is this marble track, which I will give it props. I'd like to see this marble mechanic replicated in some other games. But other than that, that's kind of all the game is. Just, you know, get resource A, turn it into resource B, slight restrictions on where you can, uh, how many you can store, like confusingly you can store one of one resource, two of another and three of another. Don't ask me why, just there for a restriction sake. But then when you produce stuff, it goes into a crate and you can store as many as you like. So as much as that restriction is a pain, it only applies for taking stuff from the marble set. Other than that, you can pretty much do whatever you like. You just basically level up the cards. You obviously have to cover a level one with a level two, but it doesn't matter what color it is. So you've got a fair bit of flexibility there and they just have different costs and different VPs and that. So as I say, if you want a very simple engine builder, then by all means, have a look at this. That marble mechanic is cool. Just do not buy this thinking that, oh, I love Lorenzo, therefore I'm gonna love this. First game I played with this was with two friends of mine who are massive Lorenzo fans. They love it to bits. They love the base game. They will play it any time of the week. 
they found this to be pretty generic. And if fans of the base game, like the big game, are going to call this generic, then where do you think I stand and where do you think other people are going to stand? So, not much else to say on that. It's fairly well produced, it's simple, it's a pretty bare bones engine builder. I just wish there was more to it. But I gotta give it props that it does function smoothly and there's no major faults that I can really say about the game other than the fact that it is just a bit generic. I'll give this one a 6 out of 10 honestly. I, I don't think I can recommend it over other simple engine builder games. I think I would rather play something like Splendor or a few other like little engine builds or maybe something with a bit more meat involved. But if you are just looking for that bare bones engine builder in a short space of time, then this one is worth looking at. Just don't expect this to be one that you're going to play over and over again because you are going to see a lot of repetition in this. So that's my review on Masters of Renaissance Lorenzo e Magnifico the card game. I'm not saying that in full ever again. But if you like this format, let me know. Tell me in the comments what you think. This would allow me to put out a bit more content on the review front because a game like this didn't really warrant a full six hour edit, you know, detail format. But for a quick fire one like this, I at least get to talk about the game, give my verdict. You could make your decision on whether you want to purchase the game or not. And, you know, it's a lot easier for me in the editing room, believe me. So let me know your thoughts and, you know, you can join me on the next video where I'll probably be talking about the solo mode for Ginkopolis. Don't forget to check out my other content, consider subscribing if you like what you see, and also don't forget the 5% discount code in the description to get some discount off zatu.co.uk. Go fill up some gaps on your shelves, there's plenty of games out there for you to try, including maybe this one if it takes your fancy. So take care, and remember as always, it's only a game. Bye for now.